we're dealing with a warranty problem, the FASB has um, given us two ways in which we can account for the costs that are associated with warranty. And one of them is through what we call using the accrual method and the second is through what we call the cash method. So this video will walk you through this problem um, in showing you warranty costs and how we correctly account for them given the two various methods um, that uh, the FASB has laid out for us. So the way I've set this problem up is first to kind of give us some context and how uh, and why it is we're going to do what we do. We look at there being two years in this example of where we're selling um, Blu-ray DVD players. And when we sell that Blu-ray DVD player, we're told that we sell it all in October of year one. We sell 900 of them for $125 each. That means all of these sales are going to be recorded in year one. However, the problem with warranties is that we've guaranteed that for one year beyond the date of sale, we will send uh, or fix the any defective product for any of the Blu-ray DVD players that we send out and that typically means that within one year we'll probably be looking at year two before we have any real issues that arise so any cash that's paid out to fix these DVD players will happen in year two. Notice the sale happened in year one the cost to fix them will happen either in year two or year one or most likely some combination of both and that causes us a problem from an accounting perspective because we have two very distinct uh, accounting periods that we're accounting for and we'll have an income statement for each period and a balance sheet for each period and our goal as an accountant is to get the right sales into the right period and to get the right warranty costs into the right period and since the cash flow doesn't match um, you know the date of the sale we've got some problems in how to account for it so the first way that uh, we're going to look at this is through the preferred method which is the accrual method also known as the expense warranty approach and we need to somehow come up with and estimate how large the expected warranty costs are going to be and you would typically do this through a company with uh, you know the, the insight of your engineering staff they have certain um, measurements they can run, you know, expected mean time to failure is a common one, and they know fairly accurately about how much of their product will fail and what the cost would be to repair it. So our engineering department in this problem told us it's going to be about $10 per unit for every uh, one unit we sold. So 900 units times $10 is an estimated warranty cost of $9,000. That doesn't mean every DVD player is going to be required to uh, be fixed in the amount of ten dollars but just on average we think it'll be nine thousand dollars to fix all the problems for the nine hundred that we sold so the the matching principle is the rule that we follow and how to account for it using the accrual method and that matching principle says you look at when the revenue was booked which is year one and you match any corresponding expenses that were required to generate that revenue in the period in which the sale occurred. So that means we're going to try to get these costs into the same accounting period as the sale. Not when they actually might occur, which is a future year, maybe, um, but when we actually sell them. So here's um, how I've laid this problem out. And you can see I've got two different uh, boxes here, one for the accrual method and one for the cash method. The accrual method is the one I want to work through first. And so for year one, when we sell the product, we're going to record the entire revenue, and we're either going to receive cash or accounts receivable in exchange for that. And actually, that's the same for both methods. It doesn't matter. The, book, the, the revenue is booked in the year in which the product transfers ownership to the um, uh, customer. That's the revenue recognition rule. And so, but look what happens here. Is we are going to expense that warranty, the entire $9,000 in the year we sold the product. So we're matching that expense in the year, in year one, when the product was sold. So we're gonna debit warranty expense, credit warranty liability for the entire $9,000. That's accrual accounting at its most basic form, is that you account and match for uh, expenses in the period in which they incur, not necessarily when the um, expense cash flow follows the expenditure. 
So uh, the problem further tells us this, that during the final months of year one, we had $4,000 related to these warranty costs that we sold in year one that we actually had to um, make good on or, or uh, incur to uh, fulfill our part of the warranty obligation. So under the, accru the accrual method, we take and notice we're not going to, this is the correct entry, you debit warranty liability and you credit your cash or labor or inventory, however you, uh, whatever you used to fix the problem. It didn't hit warranty expense again, which is extremely important to understand. Instead, we reduced our warranty liability, and we then uh, reduced our cash or other items used to fix the problem. So the expense still is in the same year of the sale, and then we just start to, uh, when the actual costs are incurred, we reduce the outstanding liability. So the last part of that problem for the accrual method says that now in year two, which is an entirely new accounting period with a new set of income statement and balance sheet, we've got $5,000 of additional expenditures required to make good on our warranty promise to our customers. So that $5,000 is going to happen in year two, but notice we don't hit expenditures again. That'd be double dipping. We can't do that, right? So we've already expensed it in a prior period but we created this corresponding liability and that liability is now exhausted. We reduced it 4,000 here and 5,000 here and we've correctly accounted for the warranty using the accrual method. The second part of the problem says that we should use the cash method. <coughs> Excuse me, and so the cash method is um, similar through the sale and that's really it. The cash method says you don't recognize any warranty expense until you actually expend the cash. So we don't book this warranty expense entry like we did in the accrual method when we're looking at the cash method because there's no cash dispersed at that point in time. But we do know subsequently $4,000 in year one was spent to fix our warranty problems. So we expense the 4000 at this point and then credit cash labor or inventory. So notice the difference between the two. In the accrual method we debited warranty liability and the cash method we debited warranty expense. And the final entry in year two, a new accounting period, we hit warranty expense again when the remaining costs are incurred, which is very different from the accrual method. So that's the difference between the two is, is in year, year one, the entire warranty costs are expensed under the accrual method. And under the cash method, part of the warranty expense is uh, incurred in year one, and then the remainder is pushed through in year two. So very different outlook, and that kind of gets us into number three and four. Uh, number, number three says show how the balance sheet would look under both methods at the end of year one. And at the end of year one for the cash method, there is no balance sheet implication for the warranty because there's no outstanding warranty liability. We didn't record a liability like we did here. But under the accrual method, what's going to happen is this. You'd have a balance sheet that might look something like this. You have your assets, and then you have your liabilities, and you're going to put over here into your warranty liability the amount of the outstanding warranty at the end of the year. I've created a DT account right here for us to show us that when we originally expensed the warranty, there was $9,000. $9,000 doesn't show up on the balance sheet because we then reduced that liability by some of the costs incurred for $4,000 remaining leaving us a remaining balance of five thousand dollars so on the balance sheet we would show five thousand dollars of current liability for this related warranty the reason it's current is because this warranty is a one year warranty that means that the war that our obligation ends after one year which by definition makes it current if this warranty were um, a warranty for an automobile let's say and those often last many years up to ten or even more um, you would potentially have to split the warranty liability between its current portion and its long-term portion based on an estimated amount of how much is going to be uh, expensed or consumed or incurred in this following year versus in following period. So a little more complicated there, but the idea is simple that you, you get the amount that's current into the current portion, the amount that's long-term into the long-term portion. So the last thing I want to look at here, kind of skipped around here, well, not really. Number four, comment on which method shows a better measure of income. This is 
you need to compare side by side. The better measure of income is clearly accru the, acc the accrual method, which is why this is the preferred method by the, 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 the FASB, because the expense is recognized in the period in which the sale occurs. Look at the cash method. We don't, we don't record all the warranty expense. 5,000 of it happens in year two, and there's no corresponding sale in year two. So if nothing happened in year two, you'd show a net loss of $5,000. That's just not logical because you didn't sell anything in year two related to this warranty. So you should capture the expenditure in the period in which the, the revenue was booked. 